Hey everybody, uh, we're on day four here with my little guy working the camera, filming. It's uh, April the 18th, 2020. Um, the last video that we did, I was showing you the pile of maple that we had cut from last fall. And uh, I wanted to explain a little bit more today about how we choose to thin our maple trees as we're going through our property. Okay, um, first off, at the base of this here one, if I can get you to come in nice and close. Okay, and look down in here. This here would have been cut late last fall, if not the fall before that. And you can see we have one branch that we cut off here, another one around the trunk here, and another one that was here. Okay, so this what this would have been growing up in a clump of maple trees. Okay, you can stand back a little. Uh, what we are aiming to do is to take out all of the branches in the late summer to uh, late fall on these maple trees and leave just the most solid, straight maple tree that's left here, okay? And eventually, uh, it's going to take a while, but these here are going to end up producing maple syrup when they get about 12 inch diameter on them uh, wide, okay? And that would be um, circumference of about 36 to 40 inches then you can actually start tapping these trees so that by the time my little guy here is about my age, he'd probably be able to uh, come back here and use whatever's left in this stand of maple for maple syrup. Uh, now that said, uh, you could see if every one of these main trees that you see, and just look around here for a second, Leo, um, every one of these would have had a number of branches coming off of them. You can see here as well, there's two I cut right there at the base of this one, three actually. Okay, so uh, we had to come through and, and selectively pick our best trunk out of each clump. And then after that, we're starting to spread them out, uh, even the main trunks that are left, to be about six or eight feet apart. So you can see I've got a reasonable spread between these two here, uh, this one, and this one here. And now what we're going to have to start doing is maybe thinning it a little bit further uh, this fall. And we might take out something like this here one for firewood, leave this here trunk so that we have this one, this nice one here that I started next to, and we would probably take out one of these two and for firewood. So maybe this one will come down this fall for firewood. This one here would be left. And uh, in the end, we'll have, you know, like I say, several feet apart from here to here to that one. Those will be the, the trees that I leave to mature. They're never going to be cut after that. They're going to stay here for the next 30 years, mature into maple syrup trees, and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Now, uh, again, it's in terms of firewood and thinning these, uh, we're not doing anything this time of year because the maple syrup runs in the spring. I don't want to do any damage to these. So uh, all of this work on the maple trees need to wait until fall. We'll come back. We'll knock that one down, we'll probably knock this one down, and we'll continue thinning throughout this here stand until we have it down just to the main trunks that we really want to have left in here, okay? So I'll get you to come this way. Uh, as we come into the next stand of trees here in front of us, you can see we get more into uh, our conifers. Mostly we have spruce and balsam fir on this property. And if you just pan up there for a moment with the camera, you can see the tops that are left on these trees all look really good because that's one of the criteria that we're using. Okay, you can come down again. Uh, one of the criteria we're using when we come through our forest and we thin it, if the top is broken on the tree, that tree we may take down. Uh, also, if the trees are crowding one another too badly, we may take them down. So we're trying to thin everything to be a few feet apart. So keep coming along. Here you can see we have a nice maple again here. And we have a maple here. And then we're getting into spruce and balsam fir. There's another spruce here and a spruce here. Now I left these for the time being because they do have nice tops and I've already spread out quite a number of them. You can see right here if the dog will move. Come on over, Buck. Come on over here. There you go, buddy. There's a, a stump that's left here that we would have cut something down. That was cut down. Right there, there was a tree cut down. 
So we're taking our time and we're just going through and thinning the stuff that can easily be taken down that's dead or uh, broken tops or crowded really badly. And this is what we're left with after the, you know, the first kind of pass through. Now also on these, you'll notice that there's no limbs down low because we're going through and taking out any limbs that are from about eight feet down to the ground. Now, the reason that early spring, uh, I can start cutting these again now, but uh, early spring I haven't touched anything like this just yet, any of these uh, softwoods. And it's because the snow is only just melting uh, right now that we can actually get down to the base of the tree. And so a few weeks ago we would have had snow up about this high on these trees. And if I were to take down something like this to use to build something with, where it's a nice straight pole that we could use for, uh, for a log for something, I don't want to end up losing, you know, several feet on a nice pole because I'm not getting down close to the ground. So anything that we go and cut to go to use for lumber or, uh, you know, a log structure, we want to wait until the snow melts that we can get down to the base of that tree in order to cut it off uh, nice and cleanly and use the entire log. Uh, so we can start getting into that now, now that the snow is coming down. And uh, we'll just continue to come through. And you can see we have more to kind of pick and choose. These here are looking pretty crowded. So something here is going to likely come down. Uh, also, I'm still favoring the maple trees on the property as much as possible. So I want to make sure that this maple isn't crowded. There's another very nice maple here. I wouldn't want to see that that gets crowded. But again, uh, because I really just want the one main trunk for tapping down the road, I may take out something like this. Due to the size of this, probably not. I may end up just leaving that alone. But uh, anywhere where I see a big tree like this and I see a really small diameter uh, you know, shooter or branch coming up off of a main trunk, I generally take off that small diameter uh, piece just so that we're left with just the one thing. And then the tree's energy would go into making this trunk larger instead of feeding a smaller limb off on the side. Uh, and then we'll just keep coming through to get an idea of what we have left here. Again, we've got nice maple there, a big one. We've got small ones here that we're going to leave. And so over time, as we go and as we have projects to build with, we're going to end up taking down more and more of these uh, fir trees and just leaving these maples in behind them. Now the other part about this is that a maple tree, uh, it can live to be about three to four hundred years old. So it's one of the longer lived trees in our forest and it's also what they call a shade tolerant tree. So typically you get when you log an area, you'll get some trees come up as your pioneer species that really like the sun. But a lot of those pioneer species, and that's where I, I mentioned on another video that I think the gray uh, birch is a pioneer species. They're not typically very long-lived trees, and eventually they get overshadowed by the shade-tolerant trees when these reach the canopy. And so these here, are gonna, you're going to find more in older growth forest. You're going to find more maple than you would something like a gray birch. We're just trying to uh, accelerate that process a little bit by coming through and taking out a lot of that stuff that's crowding the maple and just making sure that the maple can grow really well on its own. Come along this way. My dude. This year would have been cut last fall. At some point I got lazy and stopped debarking it. But these here logs, they've got to be skinned if they're nice straight poles. And they should be skinned when they're green. Uh, once they dry, it gets harder to get this bark off them. But this one's still coming, peeling pretty easy. And uh, so this, like I say, would have been cut probably last fall. And we're going to use this to, um, to eventually use it for something to build with. I don't know, another camp or something that we're doing. So come this way. Pine is another very long-lived species and grow to be very large, so I, I tend to like the pine as well. And uh, as we come over here, we find ourselves back to where we're doing our wood pile, and uh, we're finishing our maple that we cut out of the stand from last year. That's all that's left of it are some small pieces. And this right here is what's left uh, 
after we're done processing our maple firewood, we have a pile like that of really small branches. Uh, I still use those branches as well because rather than making kindling at the end of the season uh, where you have to take a large piece and then you know put it make it into small smaller pieces for the wood stove this stuff here you can use for your kindling once this is dried up and seasoned it'll crack and you can use all of these tiny little pieces to start your fire as opposed to having to make kindling at home so uh, even that stuff has a purpose I guess we'll say uh, so that's it for today. Uh, the next time we come out, I'm going to take you over to another stand where we have more of this gray birch again, and I'll just go through my thought process on what trees we're going to be cutting this spring for firewood for this fall. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.